lads, well, the World Cup's just around the corner now. Has it sort of crept up on you a bit as it's slap bang in the middle of a season? Uh, yeah, obviously it's different to what it usually is. Usually being in the middle of summer, so yeah, I feel like it's come it's come around pretty quick. I think the first part of the season's uh, come and gone gone now. So we got one one more game, and yeah, we feel we're in a good place, and yeah, we're just excited to get out there now. I mean, there's never really any doubt that you guys were going to be on the plane, but um, it must still be nice when you get that official confirmation. Yeah, of course. I think you know as soon as that squad comes out and you see yourself in it, you're always excited to go. Um, it's something that we've been looking forward to for a long time now um, after we qualified and you know we're, we're really excited and you know we're ready to go. And, and Dan you started um, every match at the Euros I think is that right? Um, does having that experience playing at such an elite tournament stand you in good stead going into this one do you think? Yeah of course it's um, you know it's a different type of pressure but saying that there wasn't you know many fans at the stadium you know you could kind of play with freedom really um it was you know the first time that i'd been to a euros obviously coming back off that 2016 where a lot of the senior boys went and you know i think now that is you know not just for me but for for the rest of for the rest of the team to to have that experience going from the euros into the world cup you know we can all take that yeah and harry you came off the bench in three of the four matches i think it was and got one of the harshest red cards i've ever seen in tournament football um do you feel like you've improved, considering what you've achieved since that tournament, do you feel like you've improved as a player considerably? Yeah, I think what DJ said, that tournament was a lot of the players in the squad's first tournament. I know a few of the senior boys had been to Euro 16, but for us, younger lot in the squad, um, yeah, that was a massive experience and a le learning curve for us. And yeah, for me, myself, like you said, I was disappointed not to start a couple of the games and then obviously to finish on... Yeah, the the red card, although I didn't think it was, it was obviously a, dis a disappointment. But yeah, like you said, since then, the things I've achieved, the promotion here, uh, the qualifying for the World World Cup with Wales as well. Um, yeah, the experiences I've had have yeah, definitely uh, brought, brought me on as a player. And uh, yeah, we feel we're in a good position to, yeah, to go and attack the World Cup now. Obviously, it was disappointing to get the injury that you did this season. But if we're looking for silver linings on that, with the timing of it, you got back fit in plenty of time for the World Cup and you've managed to get some match fitness under your belt as well before you head off to Qatar. Yeah, like you said, that injury was... I know injuries are part and parcel of the game, but I just feel like the timing of it and for it to happen in a behind-closed-doors closed, closed game was... Uh, yeah, that was a tough one for me to take. But um, yeah, when I got the results of the knee injury, a little bit was relief because uh, people know these knee injuries, some of them can be months and months. and. Uh, yeah, so luckily it was only eight to ten weeks and I, like you said, I've been able to get minutes under my belt since um, a few starts as well, which was important because the first couple of games I came off the bench. But for me personally, to get back up to speed, I know I needed a few starts. So to so have had two already and yeah, like I said, hopefully another one on the weekend, I feel like I'm back in a good place and yeah, near full, fully fit to, uh, yeah, to, like I said, to go into the tournament. And the Welsh fans always good value at tournaments. Um, how big a part can they play, especially as, like you said, Dan, um, they weren't really there at the, the last tournament. Yeah, massive part. You know, the you know the recent games that we've had, the qualifiers, they've they've been absolutely brilliant. You know, um, you know we always talk about them being our twelfth man, and we you know we've talked to the boys about the two thousand and sixteen of the support that was out there. Obviously, it was different the way it was way it was set with obviously the fans allowed to go to the games in Azerbaijan. It was. A little bit different because you know we didn't really have that atmosphere and the same when we went to, to Holland to play Denmark there was only the Welsh fans there that lived in the country at the time but you know I think it's going to be a little bit different I think was it 2,500 fans can come um, you know I don't know how many have been sold but you know I'm sure we'll be able to hear them. And I heard the uh, the official Wales World Cup song this week good rousing anthem you boys rating it? Yeah, yeah I think it's good uh, obviously we heard it uh, last last camping in the summer as well, so uh, yeah, to hear that's great. And yeah, like DJ said, we know the Welsh fans they travel in their numbers. They followed us all over Europe in the qualifying campaign. Now the COVID restrictions are gone, and I know a lot of them um, we got they weren't able to make it to Euro 2020 with us being in the countries we we were in and the restrictions. So yeah, I'm sure a lot of them will be hoping to yeah to make up for that to coming out to support us in Qatar and. Yeah, we know the ones that aren't able to make it, uh, they'll be follow following us back home and uh, yeah, we know we'll be going on that pitch with, with all that support. It's going to be a big full of interest in the Wales-USA game, obviously. Are you guys looking forward to coming up against Jedi and Tim? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he likes to talk about it most days. But yeah, of course, I think you know all games we're looking forward to. You know, it's going to be you know a little bit strange one. There's not many times that you, know, you play 
two t your two teammates from you know the same club. So um, no, it'll be, it'll be very good. They're they're a very good team. They're very strong. Um, we played them once when we were you know at the Swansea Stadium before, and they, they just played with the European players. And you know they've got got a lot of young talent, and you know I'm sure it'll be a good game. Harry Tim actually told us this week that you're not speaking to him at the moment. Is that true? Uh, I won't be after the game on Sunday. I think until then we're teammates, and obviously all four of us want the same result on Sunday. But yeah, we've had a little joke that after that we won't be speaking, and uh, don't think Jedi's too happy about that. But um, nah, it's just a bit of friend, friendly banter. But like I said, we got the United game first, so we're all on the same team for that one. And then yeah, after that we'll be getting ready, and we'll be doing all all we can for Wales, and they'll be doing all they can to get the result for the US. Yeah, and obviously there's a small matter of Wales versus England as well. That's going to be high intensity, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think it obviously gets mentioned a lot with the two home nations. But, um, you know, we're, obviously that's the last game. And, you know, we'll be thinking about that after the Iran game. You know, hopefully we, um, you know, we go into them first two games with, you know, two good results and we can go into that last one, you know, with, with our heads held high. But, you know, we, as I said, we won't be thinking of that game until, you know, the Iran game's finished. I don't want to talk about Gareth Bale too much, but just how good is it having that guy in your team? Because he's a big game player, isn't he? He showed it in the playoffs. Yeah, he's, like you said, he always seems to produce when it matters. And I know over the last few years, um, he probably hasn't had the game time that he would have wanted, but yeah, that never shows when he turns up for Wales. He always looks fit. And like I said, he always pops up with a goal or a big performance when it matters. And he was the one that yeah, that scored the goal, which got us through. Um, so yeah, to have him as our leader and our captain going into the tournament, um, is great because no matter if he's 100% fit or 50% fit, we know when he's on that pitch, he's uh, he's capable of producing that moment of magic to win a uh, to win a game. What's it going to mean to each of you to represent Wales on the biggest stage? Yeah, it's going to mean everything. You know, um, we get you know it's been talked about so much. Um, we're obviously, you know, super excited as it's a, obviously a strange format being in in November and. You know, you know. Hopefully, everyone can get through this weekend and, and stay fit. And you know, as soon as we go away, now we, you know, we're fully focused. And yeah, every time we step on that pitch, it's um, with Wales. You know, we we're proud, and you know, and as I said before, we're um, we're super excited for the, for the fans to be there, and you know, we'll play for them as well. Harry, yeah, I think it's what you work towards. It's every little boy's dream. So. Yeah, to finally yeah to reach that dream with Wales as well, because with it being our country's first World Cup for 64 years, so to be part of the squad that's got us there and to be part of the squad that's going to represent the country there, it's a yeah it's a massive honour. Um, like I said, every boy's boy's dream. So yeah, when we get there, we'll be making sure that we uh yeah we we give our all, we do we do our best, and we'll see how far it takes us. Dan, you qualified to play for Wales through your father, who's sadly no longer with us. Um, but what do you think he would have made of seeing his boy compete at a World Cup finals? Yeah, I think, um, you know, if I was able to tell him now, you know, it would be, you know, a laughing thing, really. Um, you know, obviously, every all the times he watched Wales, it wasn't, as Harry said, it was 64 years. So, you know, to be involved in that, it would be, you know, to tell him that now, it would be, you know, absolutely brilliant and, you know, I'm sure you know he'll be he'll be down watching watching me play and you know I I do a lot you know for for him and you know he took me when I was 12 to the north North Wales and you know I'll always thank him for that for driving me to you know be involved in that format because maybe if he didn't I would have never played for Wales now so you know a lot of it is down to him. And just finally, yeah, Wales have shown previously on this stage just what they're capable of. Um, what do you guys think the expectation is going into Qatar? Um, I don't think there is much expectation on us. I'm not sure uh, many people from the outside expect us to get there. As on the inside believed in the squad we had and the coaching staff we have and everyone that works around us, we knew that yeah, if we performed on for each game in the qualifying campaign that we'd be able to uh, achieve achieve it and we have. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's any pressure, pressure on us. We'll probably go into most most game uh, games as the un the underdog, but yeah, we we don't mind that because we've shown in the past that... Uh, yeah, on, on our day, we're capable of beating the best. Would you echo that, Dan, just game by game and progress as far as possible? Yeah, I think so. I think it's, you know, it's you know a good thing we haven't got massive expectation. Um, you know, we go there, play with freedom. You know, our, our first aim is to get out of the group and, you know, we see what happens from there. But, you know, we, we fully believe in ourselves to, to go into every game knowing that we can get a result. Thank you, boys, and best of luck. Thank, Thank you. you.